Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and over. So today what I'm going to do is a show called Cannabis and Dreams. And it's talking about how cannabis can affect your dreams for the better. Um, a lot of studies have been put out and put forth and brought up to us on the internet via uh, through the minds of a physician or a doctor or a scientist. And usually when it's from the mind of a doctor or scientist, the findings are of that mindset where um, it's limited to one specific type of study and that's it. Um, and I want to give you an example of that by reading these article, some of these articles that people write or that have been written and that are available online if people are curious about the effects of cannabis and the dream time. Um, I think a lot of people are spreading a lot of lies about cannabis in the dream time. Um, I think that a lot of the circumstances that happen with cannabis in the dream time with people having a hard time recalling dreams has to do a lot with other people saying that they can't recall dreams because they smoked cannabis. Cannabis has been blamed for so many things. Cannabis has been blamed for people not having enough motivation to get done what they need to get done. Cannabis has been blamed for, um, for violence of all things. <laughs> you know, so, um, I just wanted to read to you guys a few of these articles that, and then I'll give you my viewpoint on it. So today I'm, I'm out of medicine, out of cannabis. I'm, yes, I'm a medical cannabis patient. That's hap that happens when you don't have access to affordable medicine, cannabis. That's what happens when you're out, you're out and you don't have any money to buy any, you're out. There's nobody gonna like give you what you need uh, as far as to medicate for the pain in my my knees and my ankles, for the arthritis that I have, was diagnosed with, and for the diagnosis of having PTSD. So, um, yeah, it's one of those times. But as the saying goes, this too shall pass. <laughs> I think I wanna let my hair down. It's up, it's been up for a while. It's time to let it down and relax a bit. With this huge gigantor t-shirt on. I know it's it's a stony Sunday shirt, but I know it's Friday, but whatever. I just like the shirt, it's comfortable. And when you're on your when I'm on when I'm on the moon time, it feels really nice to have something comfortable and soft to wear. I think I wanna do maybe a hat right now. I'll be back. I have my hat. I have that one dread that loves to hang down in my face. So let's see. Use this hat today. Yeah, that's the hat I want. There we go. I like my hair out and stuff, but just that one lock that goes in my eye just won't do, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm gonna do before we get into reading this article is I'm gonna bring you guys down here and um, I'm gonna roll some um, catnip and chamomile joints. Now, if you haven't seen me do that before, uh, check out my past videos that I've done on this channel. I know it's dark down here. I don't know if I can uh, point it more towards the light. Does that make any difference? Not really. I've got a dark brown girl in the in the dark. A little bit of redundancy going on there, but that's all right. At least you can see my pants, right? <laughs> all right. So maybe this will be more of a confidential video. <laughs> So we've got the catnip here, and I'm not in any way endorsing or saying you should do this. So don't look at me as a role model. If you're interested in figuring out what catnip can do for you and chamomile, smoking it, then please do your research. Definitely. Get online, get some books, and do your research like I did. That's what I did before I decided to smoke either one of these herbs. Um, a lot of people are starting to, to turn towards legal smokables because cannabis is expensive or unaccessible 
uh, wherever whoever chooses to partake in this uh, these herbs lives. Some people will laugh and make fun of the fact of someone smoking a cannabis, a catnip joint because cannabis is so popularized now and it's so, such a trend right now. Just like dreadlocks are a trend, um, so too is cannabis. And the more trendy something is, the more popular something is, the more valuable a lot of people will see it as being. But if it was no big deal, if it wasn't illegal on the federal level, and in some places the state level, then um, it wouldn't be such a big deal. And I've said this a million times before. Uh, valerian tea is very um, potent. And, I, and valerian root in general, I heard you can actually smoke that. <laughs> so one of these days when I get some valerian root, I might experiment with that. Um, I do want to grow it. My son's been wanting to grow valerian. Uh, it's a nice, nice herb root to uh, to drink of if you have a problem with insomnia, for real, and you don't have access to cannabis. Um, valerian is very strong and very effective of an herb. A lot of times when they... So that's what I got going on here, if you want to see it. A lot of times when people... Um, <clears throat> will mix valerian with other herbs. It seems like it weakens it or it's not as pronounced. So it doesn't give you as much of the sleepy time effects. Like for instance, sleepy time extra. Sleepy time extra is a good one, but um, not, as, uh, not as fast acting as say just plain old valerian root tea. So it's a very helpful tea though by celestial seasonings, the sleepy time extra. That shit's ex really expensive though. It's like five, I don't know, to me it's expensive. Five dollars, a little bit over five dollars a box from where we go and see it sold. And that's why I wanna buy my own, I wanna buy my own uh, seeds. I think we have the seeds, we just need to plant them. Plant the seeds for the valerian. We bought some valerian seeds a long time ago and then we misplaced them in the other house we lived in. And sure enough, when we moved, <laughs> I found those seeds. So I do want to plant some valerian seeds. And when I do that, I'll try to capture, I'll try to record that for a video. Um, if I don't, I'll at least show you the plant and how that looks. Because you pretty much you're using the root. And it takes a while for it to be established to grow. Uh, um, but you can get valerian root at any health food store just about in the bulk session section session <laughs> the bulk session <laughs> the bulk sesh, section so yeah when i'm out of herb i do notice that my uh, my speech is a little bit different as far as <laughs> as far as communication goes i mean a little bit that has to do with mercury retrograde still going on cuz when mercury re is in retrograde you start to um, have a hard time with communicating and getting your thoughts and ideas out effectively for people to understand you completely. So around this time, um, it's probably a good idea not to say too much. <laughs> Keep your words to a minimum and maybe become more of an observer than a talker. You know, so it's just a little advice I would suggest. If anybody is out there listening, they might find that helpful. Uh, but yeah, I do notice when I don't have cannabis, also my dyslexia starts to get... I have dyslexia, and uh, I'm dyslexic. Um, I don't know if people would say to the extreme, um, but to the extreme, I had to learn how to um, read um, using a lot of drills and things like that through very pretty much traumatizing when I was a kid because I ended up you know with drawing and with writing that didn't allow us to draw in really that much in elementary school at least the one I went to um, but this is the I'm not trying to give you the finger but this this is the finger that's fucked up right here you see how the the nail is all weird and then I have a bump on that finger I don't know if you can see that that's from holding my pen 
or my pencil is so tight because I'd have a teacher standing behind me looking over my shoulder and watching everything that I do. And that was just nerve wracking. So um, they didn't diagnose me as having dyslexia when I was a kid. I don't think they did that a lot back then. And um, yeah, I do notice that the difference between when I smoke cannabis and when I don't, the words don't flow as easily for me. So I'm not saying I have to have cannabis to live, to survive. I'm just saying that there's so many plants out there that we should be allowed to utilize if we want to and not made out to be drug fiends or something like that. The people living on this planet where these medicinal herbs grow for a reason, you know, and I was watching this one channel and I'm debating on whether or not I want to continue watching it. I'm not going to sit here and bag on it and, and call it out and talk about it because it's not necessary. It's just a difference in opinion. I'll tell you in a second. So the person running this, uh, this channel, they did this video talking about how <clears throat> you shouldn't like, you shouldn't use psychedelic substances in order to reach a spiritual realm or higher, higher, um, higher level of being. And I'm like, and then he uses, says, oh, I, when I was in college, I used to smoke lots of weed. And I freebased a few times, cocaine. And like, but that's not freebasing. I mean, how can you compare that to, say, smoking a joint, smoking cannabis, or smoking uh, out of a bong of cannabis, or smoke, or even doing ayahuasca or DMT or whatever? He was bagging on ayahuasca, bagging on DMT, and talking about how we as people on this planet don't need to partake in those type of, he needs to call them drugs. And uh, we don't have need to take those drugs in order to reach a, a spiritual enlightened path. And I'm just thinking to myself that there's a lot of other things that do have that effect on you, um, awakening your spirituality. And they're not illegal, so nobody shuns them. So if ayahuasca and psilocybin mushrooms and peyote, which are all things that this person mentioned on this one video I watched recently, if all of these substances, or oh, and mushrooms, but he didn't mention psilocybin mushrooms, if all of these substances are not supposed to be used, why are they here? And why were people able to have these experiences from them? Does that mean these experiences mean absolutely nothing? And that's pretty much what that person was getting at. And I didn't like that message that was being sent forth. It's almost like everything else I'd watched before then kind of meant nothing. <laughs> you know, after I saw that video, you really see, really saw the person's, what they're really all about. And they were talking about, well, you just need to get closer to God. And the thing is, it's like with a lot of people who say these things, you got to look at them and where they're at and how fortunate they are and how what they have, what they're blessed to have in this world. And the upbringing they had was probably a gentle and kind one, a nurturing one. That is not so for everyone. We can't just, not everybody can simply just like sit down and meditate and think about God, whatever that means to you or anyone else. I mean, this person claims that when he talks about God, he's not, you know, single out a specific, um, a specific gender, but he'll say him, he all the time, God as he, him all the time. And then he claimed that in one of his past videos that he, um, he doesn't think of God as a male or a female. He just thinks of it as an energy universal energy type of deal and it's kind of like but then now you're calling him him 
all the time. So I don't, it's interesting that people can probably not be aware of a lot of things they say after they say them in a video. Time will go by and they probably won't remember the things that they said. But it just really, um, it just made me feel uncomfortable to watch this person's channel and their videos. So I don't need to express my opinions on someone's video and, you know, get all mad and stuff on a comment and shit. Because that's not my style at all. A long time ago, I did that. It was a message board and this one, uh, Websites that I join having to do with freeform dreadlocks, or just dreadlocks in general, natural dreadlocks. And I responded back with a, kind of a combative response. Excuse me, and it turned into something ridiculous. So I don't get into things like that. That was ages ago that I did that. But it was it made sense what I was doing at the time. But I felt like, you know, you can't just sit there and um, and try to argue your viewpoint to somebody who is already have, has, it, has their mind made up as to how they see things in this world. There's a lot of people that have found great value from psychedelics, especially like psilocybin, peyote, um, all of these things, even LSD, you know, and a lot of times people will just look at the negatives or they'll take their bad experience and just think that everybody should avoid it because they had a bad experience. Or that they use these psychedelics as party drugs. Um, if these psychedelics were taken out of the party scene, then they would be more medicinal and more uh, therapeutic. So that's a little something that just bothered me uh, this week when I saw that, that one video. And it's kind of like, I'm done with this. All the other information that was being provided beforehand was really helpful, but. When you say that, it really gives me an idea where you're coming from. Because this same person, he had did a video years back talking about he's all for people using cannabis. We call it marijuana, of course, weed, like most people do. Um, that he's all for people using cannabis in order to help with medical, uh, medical situations. But then he says all this other stuff. So. We do talking about freebasing and smoking lots of weed in college. Were you doing both of them at the same time? Or were you just doing one? You know what I mean? One at a time. Oh, it's like, what the fuck? It reminds me, like I said, of these, um, these movies where they have the frat parties and stuff. And then people bring out this large bong. And then they have coke on this side, and then they have someone's doing crack. So, I mean, that's how those movies that I review for cannabis and movies end up being. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them. I found some few, a few gems in there, but most of them are just kind of like a bad representation of people that smoke cannabis on a regular basis. They just want to have drum that into people's minds. The people that smoke cannabis on a regular basis are deranged and crazy and can't remember their dreams or remember where their keys are half the time. <laughs> that shit can happen even if you don't smoke cannabis. And I've talked about that on this channel and on this uh, show, Cannabis and Dreams. So I've got two chamomile and catnip joints rolled so far. So I'm gonna write, roll the third one and then be ready to, to read this article. Okay, where did the papers go? Oh, here they are. So if you're wondering, we're using the zigzags, so the hemp ones, they're really nice. Um, I don't have the raw ones, I haven't had those in a while. <clears throat> the place that I went to go buy these papers from when I bought them, um, they had the raw ones, but they didn't have the smaller ones. They just had the, the king size ones. And I bought the king size ones before, but it doesn't make sense to have a king size <laughs> joint joint papers if you can't fill it up with that much herb in it, so. Unless I'm going to make a king size uh, catnip joint. <laughs> Alright. So. I think we've got them all rolled up. 
got all three of them here. Two and three. Three joints. And I use a, a roller. So you don't have to use a roller. Um, sometimes I use a roller, sometimes I don't use a roller. It just all depends on how I feel. I a lot of times I really prefer not using a roller. Um, because I like being able to um, be a part of the whole process. The uh, today, I really don't care. I I'm kind of low on sleep because when I don't have herb to smoke, cannabis to smoke, um, it affects my sleeping. And luckily, I saved my stems, so I was able to um, brew up some cannabis tea. And I think I might have some of that left. I was drinking it by my bedside last night, and it helped me fall asleep. Um, for a while, but I ended up getting up early, so only because of that, because I'm low on herb. I usually don't, uh, yeah, I usually don't have a problem with sleeping when I do have herb, because it's so strong and dense that it helps to, to sedate me and make me feel sleepy and go to sleep. And not think about so many things that I can't I have no control over. Oh, that's right. I'm gonna have to light a match because I don't have um, I don't have a working lighter back here. So that's what we're working with. <laughs> All right, let's go on over here, and then we can read some of these articles that are insanely silly. Let me bring a candle over here. Hopefully I won't light this place on fire. <laughs> I won't. My one landlord always had this fear that his the backyard was gonna be catch on fire. It's yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> Pull my hair back a bit there. All right, let's get to business on these. Chamomile joint, so I'm gonna put a candle right here. I think that'll be somewhat set. Well, I don't want to put it too close to the camera. Let's put you right there. Candle right here. And matches here. <laughs> and what else? Um, well, the most important thing the actual joints. See that? All right. <laughs> So thanks for joining me, you guys. I know this isn't per usual, but I appreciate you guys joining me. Nonetheless, even though I don't, I'm not smoking cannabis, I'm smoking catnip and chamomile. But uh, hey, if you didn't know that you can smoke these things, you learned something new. And please do your research before you smoke anything like this or anything in general. I did my research before I, you know, I really started smoking cannabis on a regular basis and to make sure that everything is good to go. So, cheers everyone. Thank you for joining me. Definitely not as pleasant as it tastes as, um, <coughs> as cannabis, but it'll do for the meantime. Grab my ashtray, now we're in business. So those of you who are trying to get off of uh, smoking tobacco commercial cigarettes, this is one alternative you can turn to that's a lot healthier for your lungs. And yeah, it's good to have an alternative because that nicotine, not the nicotine so much, not the tobacco itself, it's the chemicals they put within it. They spray the tobacco with and that they put in the filters. That's what's killing people. So do your research and find out if you're a smoker. If you smoke all the time, smoke commercial tobacco cigarettes, it might be worth the checking out, checking it out if you're wanting to quit. So if my mom was alive, I would tell her the same thing. If my sister was alive, I'd tell her the same thing. My sister that passed away recently last month. I don't know if she was still smoking cigarettes, but I remember when I was a kid, she smoked 
I think it was Newport's. But I never judged her. And she didn't smoke, you know, in a closed, confined place with me when I was a kid. She was really cool about it, so. I really miss that sister a lot. So anyway, let's get on. Not anyway, but yeah, I do miss her a lot. <clears throat> and sometimes I wonder if she smoked cannabis. I kind of feel like she may have at some point in her life. But yeah, I don't know. Who knows, really? Unless I contact her some way from from beyond the grave or something. <laughs> you know, if I'm going to do something like that. But anyway, not anyway, but yeah, I... I just I just think of people like that, like my sister, that one sister that passed in. I wonder if she thought about things like this too. Did she smoke cannabis? Does she have dreams and when she smoked cannabis or not? Anyway. So like I'm gonna read this article. It's called, Here's Why Cannabis Users Can't Remember Their Dreams. And I read, a, I think it was last week, I read an article talking about <clears throat> that you can remember your dreams. And it was an actual person who smokes cannabis. So I think that's more of a reliable source. Some people get on me for not using sources that are reliable. I only use these sources to prove to you guys that there's so much bullshit out there. And not to believe everything that you read. And just trying to see their viewpoint on it, the other side's viewpoint on it. And a lot of times, it's just based in stereotypes and it makes no sense. So, and it's somebody who doesn't smoke cannabis that's uh, writing said article that doesn't encourage or give forth, bring forth truthful information about cannabis and dream time. <clears throat> So here we go. Here's why cannabis users can't remember their dreams. The herb will help you get a good night's sleep, but luck, but good luck remembering your dreams. It's one of the most, it's one of the many mysteries of cannabis. The herb helps millions of people get a good night's sleep, and it also suppresses the memory of your dreams. Not true. Is there any psychological or biological research supporting this phenomenon? Most regular cannabis consumers have noticed that when they stop using the herb for a few days, their brains are flooded with vivid dreams, and newcomers to marijuana discover that remembering their dreams becomes difficult. Sleep, after all, is one of the most common reasons many of us consume cannabis. Well, it's one of the reasons some people can't get sleep, and if they're able to find a really good strain to relax them enough, then they can get sleep. So, <clears throat> so and 40 million Americans report some sort of sleep disorder. Studies have shown that cannabis can improve the duration and quality of sleep. Of sleep. In 1973, <laughs> 1973, that's when I was born. <laughs> it was meant for me to read this article. <laughs> A 1973 study suggests that THC reduces the amount of time it takes those with insomnia to fall asleep. Another study found that those who regularly use THC fell asleep faster. Well, hello, you don't need a study for that fucking sh Some of these studies. Lack of sleep is becoming a serious issue in the U.S. The Centers of D Disease Control Prevention consider sleep apnea and other related disorders dangerously hidden public health issue. According to the CDC, persons experiencing sleep inf insufficiently insufficiency are also more likely to suffer from chronic diseases such as hypertension, diabetes, depression, and obesity, as well as from cancer, increased mortality, and reduced quality of life and productivity. <clears throat> so, here we go. What is this? So, so they're saying there is a direct con connection between cannabis and dreams. Here is how Dr. Hans Hamburger, <laughs> Hamburger, Dr. Hans Hamburger, a Dutch neurologist. 
Somno, somnologist. Have you heard of somnologist? Explains it in an interview with Vice. Okay, Vice is suspect too, you know. Anyway, but here it is. Every night you go through a series of sleep cycles. Each cycle takes about 90 minutes during which you go through different phases. There's superficial sleep, deep sleep, and finally REM sleep. During REM period, you have most of your dreams. You don't usually remember your dreams if you continue sleeping. The last REM period, just before you wake, you wake up, takes the longest, and you'll only remember the dreams you had in that time if you wake up during it. If you don't wake up during the REM period, you won't remember a thing. So saying cannabis interferes with REM cycle, meaning you awake without remembering what was going through your mind while asleep. It's not necessarily a bad thing for people, for many people. For PTSD sufferers, cannabis helps remove negative or harmful nightmares from sneaking into your consciousness. Now that I can agree with because I was diagnosed with PTSD about three years ago <clears throat> and um, I noticed that ever since smoking cannabis, the nightmares have stopped. Now I'll see maybe same images that I would see from nightmares, but I wouldn't see it as a nightmare. I'd be able to interpret it without feeling like I'm going to freak out or it's just too much for me to handle or go into a panic within the dream time. And that's happened to me before with, with nightmares. But I don't get nightmares when I smoke cannabis. And I don't forget my dreams like a lot of people claim to do or supposedly a lot of people claim to do when they smoke cannabis, they say they don't dream. And I've said this before, you don't dream because you don't want to dream. That's what happens. You convince your subconscious that you don't want to have a dream and then you don't. So, the mind is stronger than we realize. Yep. So, let's see. Let's see what else Dr. Hamburger is saying. <laughs> Do you feel like you want a hamburger now? I don't. <laughs> <coughs> All right, time for some water. All right, Dr. Hamburger says, according to Dr. Hamburger, by smoking weed, you suppress the REM sleep and with that, you also suppress a lot of important functions of REM sleep. One of those functions is reliving the things you have experienced and coming to terms with them, as it were. Processing all kinds of psychological influences is something you do in REM sleep. Oh, excuse me. You also anticipate the things that will happen the next day or the days after that. While you're sleeping, you already consider those and make decisions in advance. That's a pretty broad statement there. Mr. Hamburger. <laughs> I think that people can heal <clears throat> from past events, just from my personal experience, um, with cannabis and through the dream time. It takes a will and a consistency and a perseverance to want to be able to heal yourself in the dream time using cannabis from PTSD uh, symptoms that happen when you don't have cannabis, when I don't have cannabis, my dreams become more uh, fragmented and somewhat scary and uh, making no sense. But I noticed that after part being a regular cannabis partaker for quite, for quite some years, <clears throat> I've noticed that when I'm out of cannabis, it seems like the THC kind of lingers in my system. So when I dream, I'm not having a ton of nightmares like I used to when I didn't have cannabis at all within my system. So, yeah, and I think people with PTSD, uh, doctors tend to t tell them to turn away from that type of treatment, cannabis, using cannabis for those symptoms. But a lot of people that are cannabis connoisseurs who've tried so many different strains and have felt the effects of them know that certain strains 
they've found personally have worked good for them for specific specific conditions. So <clears throat> the only person that I can really take seriously when it comes to cannabis research is someone who actually partakes in cannabis. Does Dr. Hamburger partake in cannabis? I doubt not. I doubt he doesn't. Does, I mean, I doubt he ever tried it. Maybe he tried it and doesn't try it anymore. You know, that's the thing with doctors, is they're trained to be this way. They're trained to have a very conservative outlook on this world. And they want to encourage their uh, patients to do so as well. It doesn't take a bachelor's degree to know this. <laughs> what it takes is me going to several different Psychologists and psychologists in the past and observing how they treat people who have or do partake in cannabis for these conditions. That's why a lot of people won't tell their doctors that they partake in cannabis, especially on a regular basis. Because they get shunned and laughed at and put on a prescription. No, don't do not do that. Just use this instead. So. The doctors would come around when they realize that a lot more patients want to have a medicine that's more natural and not synthesized in pill form. <clears throat> so. So let's read the rest of this. Is the is that the end of it? I believe it's the end of the end of the article. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that and enjoyed sitting with me while I roll some catnip and chamomile joints. <clears throat> and thanks for being so supportive of me when I am out of cannabis. Cause I know everybody gets excited. Oh yeah, bong rips. Oh yeah, big fat joints. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. It doesn't really mean anything to anybody that doesn't have any mess. <laughs> I'm not bagging on people doing videos like that or enjoying videos, watching videos like that, because what it symbolizes is freedom. Um, people being able to partake in this beautiful herb without being judged, and criticized, because they're not going to go out and do something crazy like rob a bank or commit murder. You know what I mean? After smoking. Herb. The only time that that would happen is if they're doing some other substance along with it. And cannabis ends up being the guilty party. It just ends up being in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. This is pretty nice. So, yeah, if you haven't ca caught those videos where I talk more about the benefits of catnip, and chamomile and what it's done for me as far as smoking it. Um, you can check out those past videos I did where I'm rolling cannabis, cannabis and I mean, cannabis, chamomile and catnip joints. And it'll show you um, what the benefits are. I talked to you about that. And it's not like I just decided to smoke these herbs without any research. So do your research and don't take my word for it. I'm not your doctor, I'm not your herbalist. I'm just somebody who's sharing my experience and maybe what I've been doing you can do the the research and find out if it'll work for you so I'm not advising anybody to do this I'm just saying do your research for real all right guys definitely thank you for subscribing thank you for liking and sharing these videos with your friends and family because I think this is important information. Not only can you smoke catnip, chamomile joints, and replacement of cannabis if you don't have it, you can also totally get rid of those to commercial tobacco cigarettes and start smoking some catnip or chamomile catnip combo. Get off of that stuff because it's just going to kill you. Try to put more cleansing herbs into your, a healing smoke into your lungs <clears throat> and not a harmful smoke. You know, I've talked about the benefits of mullion too. Mullion is excellent for the lungs. 
smoking it and drinking it as a tea. And both of these herbs that I'm using on today's show can be smoked or used as tea, to drink as a tea, so. Alrighty guys, um, if you'd like to support this channel, you can donate a dollar more to my PayPal at kdaddytmama at comcast.net and include a question you'd like to see answered on an upcoming show. <clears throat> it's not required to pay to watch these shows on this channel. It's just people have asked how they can support all three of my channels. This one, The Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, Dark Moon Doll, and Healing with Color. And the money goes towards me <clears throat> keeping the lights on in here, paying the bills, the rent. It's way more expensive where I'm living right now. <laughs> and um, saving up enough money to buy some land, build tree homes on there, and um, grow all the fruits and vegetables I want on that land, and all the medicinal herbs that I can on that land. And once I get myself in that type of situation, I can help other people. So that is my plan for the PayPal and plus getting a new phone too. I mean, not a new phone, a new camera because I'm using the camera on my phone way too much. <clears throat> and those are just where that money, the funds go to, if you were wondering, because someone has asked and it's not like I'm making millions off of that. I'm not, <laughs> you know? So all those snarky comments, you can just imagine the ones I get. I know I look so I look so luxurious and fancy, right? <laughs> oh, and don't forget to catch my um. Don't forget to catch and check out my Bid Shoot channel, and my Black Junction TV channel. In case this channel mysteriously vanishes because it was terminated for three months. In case it mysteriously is not here, you'll know to go to either Bid Shoot or <clears throat> Black Junction TV. So look in the links in the description below and copy all those links down so if something like that happens, you'll know where to find me. So yeah, thank you for joining me today, guys. Brightest blessings to you all. And I hope that you, when you read about cannabis and do your own research, that you discern it and realize that a lot of these people that are writing these articles don't even smoke cannabis, have never tried cannabis, so they don't have that first-hand experience. And I feel like first-hand experience speaks volumes. You know, you wouldn't trust a doctor that's never practiced medicine. What would you trust somebody trying to tell you the effects you're going to have with smoking cannabis if they've never even tried it? And they're just basing their facts on other people that they've done studies on, you know, it's an outsider's view. You'd rather, I think you'd rather have an insider's view. So, yeah, thanks for joining me, guys, and I'll see you soon.